Welcome back to another episode of the Pokey Factor, where we take a look at a new offering from Benchmade. And I'm going to mispronounce it. Saibu? Saibao? Seiyu. 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 Yeah. From the master designer Nakamura, who has done several collaborations with Benchmade in the past. <laughs> Seichi Nakamura. Seichi. Oh, yeah. yeah. So this time we're looking at a creation with Kokobolo wood inlays, G10 handles, Whoa, whoa, CD. whoa, whoa. Slow your roll. <laughs> and dive in. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> That's a review of the knife, and we haven't even talked about what we're carrying. That's tonight. what I'm saying. Come on! Oh, that's right. We're breaking yeah. into that stuff. So <laughs> let's let's start ultra this. focus. Ultra <laughs> laser focus over here. I was excited to talk about this knife. It's a new knife. So yeah, this is the knife we are reviewing today. But what are we all carrying? I'm going out of order, so I guess I'll go start first. Yeah. Uh, back to the Sabens again. Of course, yeah. it's your tried and true. Absolutely, you're it's delicious. It's awesome. Yeah. You nice. can't call me boring. Yeah, you're the one to call someone boring. <laughs> <laughs> I pull out, well, Mr. I, I might as well call it because you know we're playing that game. We tonight. all know what you have, yeah. Mr. Gray. Yeah. We all know what rocking you have. Rocking the Bowie tonight because yeah, he's mm -hmm. he's a beautiful man, and he, it's a beautiful thing. It's a nice little knife. Mm, I've nice. got my D2 Griptilian. It takes a surprising amount of abuse. Um, Feels pretty good, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Um, For the record, <laughs> throws fantastic. It's, yeah. Stand a little I, close to the target compared to other stuff, but... I, I don't know why. I don't know... I do not know why I did it, but I did it, and it works. And it works. And it's still together, so. pretty, pretty solid lock-up stuff. Yeah. So. yeah. Worst part of it is it feels fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so good job, Henchman. You make a great throwing knife. As much as it hurt all of our feelings. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so what's Paul Carey? And I'm double fisting tonight. Dirty. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, integrals. Yeah, yeah, I no. figured... Smacking blades against mm -hmm. blades. Yeah, and it happened. I saw that. Better than marring up the handle. Man, I winced. Yeah, oh, so boy. Did I. <laughs> Let, I need to take a look at that. That's what happens when people give me shots before the video starts. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Not my fault. I twisted the arm that was already behind your back and <laughs> in the upright position. Yeah, made of rubber. And yep. the rest of the video is going to be in the downward position. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. But yeah, I I love carrying these integrals together. Mm -hmm. Understandable. So yeah, now that we've reined Joseph back in a little bit there. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey Joe, we were talking about the Sabu. Yeah, we were. were <laughs> what we? were you saying? Oh geez, well it's a pretty little knife. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, who... Who had this first this week? I can't remember. Okay, first of all, it's uh, again a good friend, Jen. Mm -hmm. Yes, that Jenny Hot Rod. To it, Jenny Hot Rod. She's awesome. Look her up on Instagram. She has a private account, so you can request to be friends, but you'll see what happens. She also <laughs> she also likes knives, so yeah. she yeah. let us play with the new knife, and I think Joe started it off. I don't know who started off with the Sabu. Well, I, got I was to last. I got to play with it before we really thought about making a video of it. So I guess technically I played with it before. Yeah, no, no. But <laughs> after Jen decided, who after Jen, did you end remember. up with it? She left it behind for somebody, and it wasn't me. She came in. I on might have taken it first. Friday, I guess something. so. Yeah, I think yeah. so. And then mm -hmm. you passed it off. And I've played with it for a couple weeks. And yeah. once we decided we were going to make this video, I played with it a whole bunch more and did some homework yeah. and mm -hmm. whatever. Right? But yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I guess, Nigel, if you were the first one to play with it. I did not like this in the videos or pictures that I saw when it first came out. It was instantly, it was like, oh, okay, cool, whatever. Toss it to the side in my mind, didn't give it time of day. As soon as it came into the shop, and I felt how perfectly it fit my <laughs> hands, and it is such a gorgeous fit and so comfy, and oh, I fell in love with it, and... This yeah. coming from the guy with massive hands. <laughs> so, like, by way of comparison, as far as the hand comparison, the guy. This is an awkward four finger grip for me. It's yep. a perfect three finger grip for him, and that's part of why I love this knife so much. Is what these guys are all experiencing is what I experience ninety percent <laughs> of the time with knives. Is they're all in that weirdly awkward stage, and this one isn't, and it's so pretty and so finely finished, and mm. and that's a big part of the price point that comes into yes. it, right? Um, um, okay, and not much cutting, not much abuse, because it no. wasn't our knife or one of our four knives, because if it's one of our four knives, yeah. <laughs> the money's on the table on what's going to happen to it. Like, it's and, yeah. and part of that, of why we didn't test it out too hard, is it is the 20 CV, and we do we'll pretty much all have experience with 20 CV or M390, yeah. so we kind of know what to expect I think the M390 Joe, here. I know, yeah. but Joe's the only one that personally doesn't have specifically 20 CV, but he's got M390 yes. and... Mm -hmm. 
potentially has played with 204P as I well. I have with Nigel's knife. I got to play with his what CT. Is Which No, that one's... Uh, That's a 20CV. Oh, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, shoot, I thought that was CTS 204P. No. The Southerd from Spartaco yeah. is 204P, the 804CF. Oh, well, the regardless... big tank with the Made in USA yeah. badge, that thing's 204. Okay, well, fair enough. Um, um, yeah, the 456 But at the CV. end of the day, it's all oh, M390. Okay. And yeah, with slight like, variations yeah. Yeah. of goodness and badness. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, yeah. Steel charts are wonderful. Yes. <laughs> um, but as far as performance, I mean, we kind of reasonably know what to expect. It's a really excellent grind, and it... Okay, Blade Profile, what do you guys think? I don't see that style very often anymore, where it's mostly a straight back and then mm. straight heavy belly. It's very traditional, I'd say. Um, I personally really, really like this sort of grind with the heavy sweep onto the tip. It's almost like a tanto, and you can use it for push cuts for up at the top for doing woodworking and stuff that like that. That is an excellent point. Yeah. I love the shape of this knife as well. It's, it's nice. It's, it's very utilitarian. It's been commented, I think, a couple times already, but the blade shape, um, Ontario Rat. Yeah. Yes. Rat yeah. 2 specifically. And when yes. you look at, at these two knives, well, and even the Rat 1, I mean, it's I just, just mean a it's size blown up version of, yeah. but this belly screams Ontario Rat. And, and that's not a bad thing. It not also screams modern Japanese traditional type of mm-hmm, thing. Which yeah. is super the look cool. Of it. So it's awesome that an Ontario Rat all of a sudden mm. is having this, like, hey, that's a Japanese-looking knife. I don't know if the Ontario is a Japanese-looking knife or not. There, there's but something good going on there. Yeah, Let, Let's try that. Let's work with that yeah. type of blade shape. And I agree with it, but this is definitely a much classier version. Mm-hmm. You can put carbon fiber handles and D2 blade shapes and whatever on the rat, but it still does not compare with... No, at the end of the day, this is The fancy, gorgeous. fancy that we've got going on here, for sure. Yeah. Jumping back in with my first impressions here, um, part of what I loved with this knife is all the fine little details in the fit and finish, and Seibu, or Saibu, um, I know I'm butchering the pronunciation, but actually pr- or translates to details. And yeah. it is very, very oh, obvious really? in this knife. That, yeah. yes. that, was by that far, is hilarious. <laughs> that is amazing. That was by far yeah. my favorite thing Details. about looking this up. Yeah. yeah, and zoom that in just so yeah. everyone can see. And I zoom might in. even bring it closer. I'll come up here. Let's get a backdrop. Yeah, so some of the details that I noticed was they kind of divoted in the ends of the get access that stud. a little more, Nigel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. we go. And they followed suit with all the ends of the pivots and the screws. Uh, the little Coca-Bolo inlay on the thumb studs on both sides there. They machined the backspacer to look like bamboo, but they also machined the inside of it as well. Uh, the little cutout on the pocket clip matching the, the windows just... And production uh, number while we're oh, up close. Yeah. Can we get a, a number on that? It it's is close. 898. Out of 1,200? 1,200, yes. 1,200, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, um... Being an art school geek, oh, let's set it back down. Yeah, yeah. Being an art school geek, this screen, this thing is just making me so satisfied. Well finished. Yeah. So detailed, indeed. <laughs> okay. And when Nigel points out the bamboo on the inside mm-hmm. of the handle, yeah, gorgeous. The first mm-hmm. thing I said was, "Is it a square slab?" that has bamboo milling on both sides and all they can do is put it in either side. You know, I'm not saying Benchmade cut corners, but I mean, if it's a factory production knife, you do what you can to mm-hmm. maximize. And the yeah. contouring... I say, that's not the case here. Right? No. On the contouring on this and the contouring on the inside, as well as where the stop pin also hits the inside of the knife, I paid close attention to that right back here. And where it sits is actually perfectly curved with where the backspacer is. Mia's playing with the toy. Yeah, the curve on the backspacer perfectly matches the curve on, on, the, on the belly as well. So, again, details. And this that. is something where you're going to look at this knife, you're going to look at the raw materials, and you're going to say, why is it worth so much? You have to handle one. Or look at this video to see that there are a lot of details that speak to the intricacy of the manufacturing. So those inlays, these yeah, inlays, those yeah. inlays are gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, I will My say. My favorite part of the knife, <laughs> yeah. right there. Oh, there is cocobolo in the thumb studs. <laughs> it's awesome. So. Like, I okay. hope Nigel turns that point of my voice up when I say it. Yeah. I, want, I want him to just squealing. 
Oh, oh. my Oh my goodness. Okay, so what's crazy about this, and Nigel and I especially would have a little bit of experience with this kind of uh, what would you call that? Like a manual machining process, but making mm -hmm. sure that things fit seamlessly. Yeah. You you have a seamless fit between the outside of the thumb stud and the interior. Zoom it in again while you're talking about that. Yeah, and the and the interior yeah, of the Cocobolo itself. Do, yeah. do it up. Oh. Say that again. And so what's your... the Cocobolo is smooth Get your and hands in there. flush Show people. to the interior Perfect. of the hole in the thumb studs. And it's on both sides. And beyond that, they actually chamfered, or not chamfered, rather, they faced hexagonally. Yes. So you can adjust the thumb studs. The attention to detail on this knife, the fit and finish across every model that we've been able to play with. This one in particular is amazing. This is worth the money if you're looking at those sorts of little mm -hmm. details. You want a beater knife? Grab a Griptilian. You yeah. want something that's an art knife and a functional piece? Not a beater knife. This is amazing. <laughs> but I would beat it up. Okay, yes. so yeah. <laughs> super functional blade profile. Look at that. Nigel mm. doesn't have it right now, but the one thing that I... <laughs> I will. No, for this particular knife. But no. the one thing I was going to say, and I, I thought about it in the backyard tonight as we were recording, and I didn't say it. If you had your 1227 Rook knife mm -hmm. on the shelf right now, put the little image of the Rook knife on here compared oh, to... No, do no, you no. have oh, it? I don't know. Oh. Womp, womp. Uh, this is like taking your 12C27 Sandvik Rook knife, as far as the blade shape yeah. to fit the feel yeah. of what I feel with this knife. Take your Rook knife and make this the fanciest version you possibly can. And, and this is exactly what yeah, they made. Yeah, was that was thought swap. hadn't even yeah, yeah. popped into my head, but like a slight curve in the handle just for nicer ergonomics. But other than that, like, yeah. And I thought about <laughs> it in the backyard. And what I thought about was using your Rook knife in a pinch grip mm -hmm. and yeah. for a left. And as soon as I put it into a baseball bat grip yeah. for your Rook and I started shredding cardboard like the last couple videos ago when I was talking about yeah, it. Yeah, the budget factor episode the budget factor this yes. is exactly what i felt as soon mm -hmm. as i got it into that hammer grip and we didn't cut a ton because again it's jenny hot rods and we love her and we're not going to beat up her knife unnecessarily because i'll beat up your knife and we, i'll beat up well, your knife exactly right? i'll definitely I'll beat, beat up, up my up. knife he threw Shit, his I mean, knife we, yeah. <laughs> we're, you're not throwing away sabenza <laughs> we're not throwing no. the same boo jenny we're gonna, no. we're gonna keep it pretty so, for you yeah, okay yeah. but in terms of and, and this may be a different term but like square ergonomics this knife feels way more comfortable than it should. Yeah. Like, you look at it, and like, eh, it's boxy, it's boring. Like, no. This actually fits the swell of your palm super nicely mm. in a pinch grip. It feels super good if you bring your finger right up to the edge. Yep. That's where I was loving it. Or and rather, yep. the tip yeah. of the blade. Well, I was gonna... Like, it's... Oh, here I go. find stab, with Brittany... You're gonna stab that guy. <laughs> is what was going on. Oh, no! <laughs> so I was finding Not that like this. if you kind of rest <laughs> up onto the front shoulder of the... It's, um, I kind of find it similar to Spyderco's with that front choil. When you get up onto that and you're using the, th the thumb ramp, it's just such a comfy little pinch grip and I can still get okay. lots of control for, like, nice fine little work. And for knives where you don't have a choil, I'm normally a little cautious about cutting myself with this knife. It, it's nice enough where you're, you're kind of pinching back, almost like a trigger. There's a flat enough purchase. Yes, yeah, exactly. It's it not. It does give you the choke up. It's offset. And it's a little hesitant. It is a little hesitant to throw your finger up there because the the choil it's, is right there. Mm -hmm. It's not but shaped. In terms but as of, long as you're not doing any heavy pressure work, even if yeah. you are, I mean, like, <sighs> I mean, I wouldn't. But if you're pressing <laughs> predominantly with your thumb and you're get, you keep a loose grip with your index, you could probably do a decent amount of work. I wouldn't and be too what worried, I think about but... is heavy duty work is wood. And when you're doing yeah. that, if you hang up in some sort of wood knot, curl, anything like that, yeah. the last thing I want is my finger up, up here there. to be going forward. You don't want to pinch yourself and slice yourself um, to the bone. Absolutely. It's probably going to be your last choice as a feather sticking knife, yeah. more than likely. Not Let's last be honest. Choice, but, but I think this is definitely more of a fancy knife. Out of his collection, it probably wouldn't be the first thing he's going to pick mm, up to feather stick no, with, is what I I'm guess saying. not. Um, but it's. <laughs> It's a nicely ground blade. We Spine live in Canada. Yeah. Right? So that's one of the hard use aspects that we personally 100%. have is the fact that we live in Canada. And, Tons of hardwood. And wood. Tons of hardwood. And everywhere. I will say, once I get mine, I will carve with it. I know I'm going to carve with it because that's need... part of why I like that blade shape. We should have a minor 100%. update in a later video. Yeah, some usage <laughs> after I grab one, yeah. Yes. What I'm suggesting, though, is that it's a gentleman's knife 
probably going to get yes. mostly used in offices and stuff mm -hmm. like that, and it's never going to come up as an issue. And you know what? As far as a flashy, kind of cool-looking knife goes with high per high performance, yeah, yeah. I can't think of many other better al alternatives. Like, if you're using this in an office setting, you probably wouldn't have to sharpen it probably for literally no. a couple oh. years. It's 20 it would be so long. <laughs> think uh, how many pencils you could sharpen with that. <laughs> I do recommend putting well. a higher polish if you're mm -hmm. competent with putting a higher polish on it, because Benchmade puts a decent edge on it, but it is a rougher, toothy edge for what yeah. Benchmade has. A working edge. Like, yeah. this hasn't been used much. Yeah, money where your mouth is. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I can hear it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can. And see you it? can see it a little bit. Yeah. Very slightly. Yeah. So, of a cut. functional, and knowing how long that edge is going to keep around, mm -hmm. um... Not the worst, but definitely, like Dana says, if you can get a high polish on a blade steel like this, it'll pay back in dividends. It's mm -hmm. not a bark rubber. It's no. not. No, 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 no. no. And, and exactly. And to point out with the toothy edge, that is kind of a standard for Benchmade. They do out of factory generally put on a fairly coarse toothy true story. edge. It's uh, true feels, story. It feels good out of the box. Yes. Yeah. For most people. Yeah. You know what I mean? And a big part of that is their target market. They're generally not aiming at the people who are hoity toity in their yeah. corner <laughs> office. <laughs> Although this seems to be catering to that market. Oh, hoity. <laughs> you. Uh, yeah, right, anyway. Please yeah, don't. Sure. Please do not. But as far as this knife was concerned, I think they did a really good job executing it. But obviously, if they were willing to put a polished edge, I wouldn't complain. Mm -hmm. um, but that's bench made, and I'm not going to gripe for that because anyone who plays with knives and puts a decent edge on, that's one of the first things you do. Or it's you wear it down until you put a new edge on. One that's or the it. other. Yeah. If this was a custom knife, I might look more to a polished edge. Mm -hmm. It's a production knife. I expect that toothy edge. Most companies will have a fairly toothy edge to them, for yeah. the most part. And that's fine. I mean, think about the end use for the knives that's like it. this, right? Mm -hmm. Now, can we get into one of the gripes that actually mm. all of us have? And I wanted you to bring out the knife oh. that you brought with you. Another Nakamura design, and I want to bring that up a little bit. Lots of similarities. Um, 2012, I want to say, as far as my yeah, catalog life. goes. Also, Jens. She seems to really like Nakamura's. Uh, she's yep. got a little sweet spot. There's I'm surprised she doesn't have the other Nakamura, which will come into the no conversation. No pocket clip. Carbon no fiber. No pocket clip. So, but Kokobolo again, carbon Ooh. fiber, lanyard, and we didn't show and S30. Off, and we didn't show off Nakamura's awesome trademark. I don't know the Japanese, yes. what it actually stands for, but this right here. Um, I can't remember. I did look it up, but I honestly can't remember. Very awesome. Tr no, it's not focusing at all. That sucks. There we go. Focus um, for a second. Really awesome Japanese writing on there, which yeah, hopefully is Nakamura's trademark. I guarantee it is. This is something that both Spyderco and Benchmade do well, is highlighting the maker's logos on the reverse side of the blade. Mm -hmm. I do appreciate that, because if I want to look up a custom version of their knives, it's it's easy it's right to do. Yeah. And if it's not there, chances are it's got the cell marking because it's Spyderco, exactly. or it's got no marking because it's just a Benchmade design. In-house design. In -house. Absolutely. And some people are going to complain about that, but if you're going to have the maker's mark, like... I'm not going to complain about no. their, them getting no, no, their, no. their name. I know some people like to put them on the inside of like uh, liners and stuff, but that's a little bit subdued for production knives. This makes sense. Some mm -hmm. people get a little aggressive about having completely sterile blades. And so they can have their... Yeah, know? that's <laughs> what I'm saying. What, uh, something I was going to point out is five years ago, this is what this was released. And S30V for the blade steel, carbon fiber and Cocobola, which is no joke compared to 3D machine contoured and Cocobola. I mean, so Jesus. Again, he even has a theme. And if you look over here, he's got, and again, I don't know if we can zoom yeah. in. Yeah, he does. Let's let's help some reason that because I'm a cripple. <laughs> and, uh, let's talk about, no, on the Megumi. Um, the back he, lock? Uh, no, 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 the thumb stud. Thumb stud. Thumb stud. Oh, yes, the inlaid, it's delicious inlaid, thumb stud. But I do not believe it is actually Coco Bolo on this one. I think it's actually G10 or a Micarta or whatever what? to make it look like. <laughs> So Let me examine this. <laughs> <laughs> I might be surprising Joe when I say this. You are, because that looks very much like a wood. I'm going to check to see if I have my loop here, and if I do, I will look at it further. That looks a lot like that wood. So I That's understand it does, job. and please someone correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments, but I do not think, I think it's their pack of wood or their birch wood, whatever they call diamond wood. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. And I was watching uh, one video where, like, it was a Blade Show video, I think, where they were um, referencing, even on this guy, it was like a diamond wood coca bola. I think on the Blade Shot Show, or the Blade Show, mm -hmm. when this was released, I think they were hesitant about calling it real wood, but then actually yeah. in the Benchmade website catalog, they are specifically saying that it's a coca bola. Okay. So I think they've so, confirmed that on this one. If they did not. No, see, this is a bit troubling too because that could be darker just be, just because of having your thumb pressed against it, having your oils against it, and darkening it over time. But you got to remember, this is Jen's knife, though. <laughs> it's not yours. This is true. <laughs> as much as I love Jen. Also, Coca Cola. Yes. Well, yes. yeah, no, these are the same Bola. woods. Wait a second. <laughs> yeah, these were the same color when I first got this. Joe, is that's the terrifying. Devil. I, Joe uh, is yeah. the devil. Anyway. Yeah. And anyhow, um, as far as these guys are concerned, <laughs> if they manage to get the wood turned correctly on a lathe so that it fits seamlessly and then epoxied in place, you know what? Fantastic. They did a wonderful job. Um, it lines up very nicely. I personally don't see any major gaps. Maybe if I were to examine it as a loop, I might find something a tenth of a millimeter out of place. But for a production knife, visually, a visual naked eye inspection, excellent. Excellent. I, I, I think they did an excellent job We're with talking it. about a compa comparison. Yeah. There's one thing that I wanted to mention, yeah. too, because you guys were talking about it previously, very quickly. Um, we're talking about how nicely machined this is and how it's a completely perfect no-gap fit. This doesn't have the same fit. It's got more of like an heirloom fit to it. But it's perfectly smooth too. It's mm -hmm. gorgeous. Yeah, um, that was part of my hesitation on it in the videos and stuff. Is it did seem gappy in some spots, yeah. but then you get in in it in hand, and it's consistent gapping. It was intentionally done with that exactly. spacing. Exactly. That's just and it's all the way around. It's yes. not a minor and like ever so it, slightly yeah. like rounded at the corners. Into, or into the machining world, this is referred to as a tolerance. Obviously, zero tolerance comes to mind when we say this, but when it comes to... No, like a tank! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> but as far as these guys are concerned, keeping everything nice and flush isn't necessarily the concern. It's making sure it's nice and consistent so the feel in hand is excellent and you don't have to worry it. about it. Which they succeeded at. Well, as far as an office user, obviously, 20 CV is just going to kick the crap out of most other steels out there. Um, you're not going to have to sharpen it for long periods of time. It is relatively stain resistant. Um, I mean... It, if you're going to be concerned about anything, maybe uh, getting bunches of dirt on the inside of the holes here. But this just serves to lighten the knife, and it's such an easy thing to clean that I don't think it really even factors well, in. Play it like a harmonica, it'll be fine. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It would be really easy to blow out a little air gun, a little... <laughs> no issue. And as far as five years ago, when the Megumi mm. came in, Coca Bolo carbon fiber compression lock, no pocket clip. So a little bit smaller, very mm -hmm. much a three finger grip. Less of an office knife, more of like a Sunday dress. I don't know. Church kind of thing. In right? my like, mind, yeah. between the two, this one's the office knife, this one's the user. Well, okay, yeah. if, if, you oh, only, two. if yeah. you only have these two to choose from, I absolutely agree with you. But the grip area is almost identical from the tip of the curve here to the back of the end here mm -hmm. here and here it's roughly the same yeah there's like so, a quarter inch of difference of uh, yeah of a uh, finger grip room in the handle and so i find myself very much agreeing with you that yes this would be the definite user of the two not just by virtue of blade shape but in terms of the overall beefiness of the knife mm -hmm. i think that it lends itself well to being a user i think the question though was if you were going to buy something that was 20 CV, you wanted something 20 CV, and you wanted it as like a heavy use knife, would you buy this <coughs> or would you buy something else? Honestly, I would personally probably go with something else because I want a little Mini bit of a grip, larger handle. Something like that. Well, for, 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 for me and my tastes, yes, I would want to go with at least the full grip in terms of size. Um, the Megumi is a little bit too small for that sort of thing. And if we're looking at 20 CVs, I guess that would only be this guy. Um, three fingers. I don't know. I mean, if I were going to pair this with something like a Kukri and go live out in the wild for a couple of months, <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, sure, absolutely, big knife and small knife, but if I only had one blade, this probably would not be it. It is not enough in the mid-range for me to really consider it as an option. I, but, I think, too, at the end of the day, that, like, I, I was kind of com comparing this to, like, the mini grip as to whether I'd buy one or the other. At the end of the day, I'd probably want to have both. Mm-hmm. If, if in, a, in a perfect well, world, they're really cool looking knives. Yeah, I mean, they don't get are. me wrong; they're awesome. And for me, 
Uh, yeah, I'm going to use this as a heavier user knife for sure. Um, the only thing that's going to limit it is what I can do based on the grip, because it is a three finger grip. But, but I'm not... still going to carve with it. And, and that's just it. You're not going to be probably not the like normal level no, of use. That I'm... No, you know what I mean. No. For most people, that I'm are using abusive. This? But generally speaking, I mean, you're not looking at this and thinking, yeah, I could baton a tree with this. Like, you're not... No. No, no. but as far as, like, splitting small pieces of wood, as far as carving goes, mm -hmm. as far as, like, this has got to go through, like, 30 cardboard boxes. Like, yeah, it's not a problem. I like feather sticking with 20 CV. It's felt mm -hmm. pretty nice in the last few minutes there. Well, and I've scalped my Griptonian with 20 CV, the sheep's foot one that I have. Yeah. And as far as the carver goes, it just keeps going and going mm -hmm. and going. And I haven't had to touch up the edge much compared to... That's probably where I'm going to go with my <laughs> anthem. So yeah. you can definitely do some thing out on the edge and it yeah. still holds phenomenal, phenomenal shape. But obviously the target market for this particular knife is more meant to be like, yeah, you're, you're, you're a user or you're a hard user. Hard use user of knives. <laughs> and then they give you this, which is very much a show knife. I think they're kind of playing into the idea that you're the tactical office worker. A little bit. I think just a little bit. But it's so classily well done that it's... I don't get that vibe by, at all. I get it a little bit. <laughs> But it's not it's not overwhelming. It's not like this is tactical out. It's not like this jimping three hundred and sixty degrees like, on this knife. For the fact that it's a one headed opener, that's the only thing that's tactical about it to me. I suppose. Yes, one hundred percent. Um I don't know what I was trying to say. <laughs> it's <Detail. laughs> um, the, the one thing I was gonna bring up though, you were saying something about specifically about the way the holes are designed. And what they're modeled after. Early. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. Um, Dennis had actually pointed out and found out that they were modeled after um, Japanese fencing, and the initial what? thought, yeah, yeah, and the initial thought was uh, the lattice work in fencing. Um, some of the videos that I had watched doing the research on this turns out that it's more indicative of uh, the stonework fencing that was around courtyards. And they had oh my goodness my, drainage holes yeah, yeah my guess is a drainage holes around the bottom of it and it had like oh, the same sort of no. offset pattern as these do I fenced for a number of years um, English style fencing however no 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 not like but not sword fencing no yeah, but yeah. like yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no I'm, I'm just, just joking like, but I'm outside. just joking but as far as like the actual structure of the handle is concerned I mean it. It is a very pretty looking knife. It sure mm -hmm. is. And it definitely speaks to... Um, well, I mean, look at the divots. Maybe yeah, yeah. In, in, in the pointed that out. They're um, so cool. This knife <laughs> is just awesome. Like, it's pretty to Details. look at. It's a really, really well done. Like, mm -hmm. what they were going for, I would say 100% success as to yes. what they were they were getting, like aiming for. Nakamura's getting pretty good at this. I mean, yeah. as far as his consecutive collaborations. And now, the other one that we don't have here to show is the Shori. Um, so just as another comparison of Nakamura's designs, the Nakamura! So... Good name. <laughs> it's a weird knife. It's it a is. really weird knife. Um, boxy construction, very slim ergonomics, and these weird finger choils. Mm -hmm. So, and it's a shame we don't have the Shori here, but I feel like the Shori and the Nakamura really fit together, where the Megumi and the um, Shimbu? Seibu. Seibu really fit together. You know, like two different um, styles of construction. A well-done knife, don't get me wrong, but not quite the same degree as fit and finish as what you would find with some of these guys, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. Not necessarily, <laughs> because they have the Dash 1. Well, the carbon fiber? yes, the carbon fiber and the S9DV are and a delicious thing. As far but... as fit and finish, there's some pretty fancy, yeah. I never gave that knife the time of day, and I finally put this in my hand, and it fits perfect. Those stupid finger joints <laughs> <laughs> fit perfectly. This knife was made for me. Yes. You and your cardi hands. And you know what? Um, a lot of people that I've talked to seem to have a problem with these finger grips. Like, yeah, they're just yeah. a little bit too small. They're just they yeah, perfect. perfect. They're just a little bit so too big. Awkward. One or the other. And for you, they fit perfectly. Yeah. I have the hands of a Japanese man, evidently. Yeah. Even even if it didn't have those finger choils, this guy would be in that awkward three finger grip yeah. for me. That's fair. But that I mean, makes sense yeah. for your size of hands. You're working with an ex at least an XL size hand. There we go. It's it's my fingers <laughs> kind of fit in the choils now. Oh, that's grotesque. <laughs> that is grotesque. Yeah. 
So what are we dealing with? We're looking at M390. And they shouldn't work, but they fit so good. But we're looking yeah. at M390. We're looking at G10. We have a pivot collar. It's we a have... nice knife. Okay, but we're looking at spacers as yep. opposed to the really cool machined back spacers. Mm -hmm. Or yeah, just some extra call little spacers. yeah yeah extra little attention to detail. You're beating that night off. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I heard bad. you tink that. Yeah, I feel bad. I'll resharpen that for you, Jen. Makes <laughs> <laughs> sense. Swift it off. Swift it um. Off. So, with having said that, um, I'll may as well get the price rest of points these. on these throughout the mm -hmm. years. This guy came in two hundred five US when it first came in two twenty five yes. for the Nakamura, and then two fifty. For the Sabu, so consecutively. So, okay, two fifty Canadian, American. All yeah. Okay, bench yeah. MSRP. MSRP. So yeah, yeah. Okay. you're working with pretty consistent average across the three different As models. It went up. Yeah. Now, design language. Do we want to talk about how weird this knife looks in comparison to the other two? Like the, the, this it looks weird. <laughs> it does. The blade is not the best. Well, the blade profile by itself, I think, is fine, but it's just, you pair it with this weird little handle with the buck-style <laughs> finger grooves. I mean, for me, I can get over it. I think that's a fine design. It feels good. But for someone like Nigel, no way. There's no way that's going to work. Or even for my girlfriend. It. Like, like she has such small hands. I don't think she could comfortably hold this knife. So it, it's kind of weird where it's this middle ground and it doesn't quite work for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, I've just renamed my hands middle ground. <laughs> <laughs> That's, pro That's not a bad idea. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like there's a stronger attraction to these two knives specifically because of the, well, the inlay work here, the Cocobolo, a lot of the carbon fiber. Yes, the, the refined nature of these two knives, they stand out. Mm -hmm. Especially things like the pot, or not, sorry, not a clip. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's the studs. The only thing that I would ask in this, if I was getting nitpicky about exactly what I wanted, would be potentially having carbon fiber with that Coco Bolo would look really mm, nice. That would look very nice. <laughs> you throw another eighty dollars on it, of you course. put it at a three coffee cleaning including coming uh Benjamin Gold class. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Wouldn't surprise I me. I could see them it doing something similar. Wouldn't surprise me in similar. the least. That mm. would look gorgeous with like Mother of Pearl. Ooh. Ooh. Just throw it out anyway, there, bench made, figure anyway, it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no need to make us all excited now. <laughs> like, wow. But in terms of I don't know. Um, between these three, obviously, it seems like we're at a consensus where this seems to be the best user. Just for the neutral ergonomics, the superior blade steel compared to the S30V. Well, or do you think the, the standard Nakamura would be the place you go? When you talk about for ergonomics... <laughs> I was going to say, even with how well that knife fits my head, I'd probably still go with the, the Interesting. Side of, the side of Interesting. Yeah. It's it's a very functional knife, but all of us agree that it just kind of lingers, except for Nigel, where it dominantly lingers, yes. and then he's okay with yeah. it, right? Yeah. This is, like I said earlier in the video, this is what I deal with with 90% of knives out on the market, and I'm so happy that other people have to deal with this instead of me. I almost want to insist that this episode be called Nigel's Revenge. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I do have Nigel to agree. Revenge factor. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I do have to agree, though. There is... Um, something that leaves me wanting with that particular handle um for me this is almost a four finger grip it just if i dedicate it to three it's like i'm choking back on it and it's okay it's not the worst thing in the world welcome to my world but that's just it it's such a nice <laughs> knife otherwise that if i were more inclined you know what i think that would be a wonderful choice and for 20 cv you can't go wrong mm -hmm. i compared it to the mini grip earlier yeah. Yes. Make the same knife in a griptilian size. Bought Ooh, it all day. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Don't even change the width. Just increase the length to a full size. Do we have a full size griptilian? Yeah, in Nigel's pocket. Or maybe. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah, because I was carrying it earlier. Yeah, for me That's... personally, if you, can ex if you can extend this to a griptilian size, done deal. Mm -hmm. That knife, for me, would be amazing. As it is, it's still a great knife. I just want there to be a little bit more handle. I'm not even so much concerned about If there about was the, the two options, I'd probably buy the bigger one. It, but if there's not that option, I would buy that. And that's I'd probably it. stick with the littler one just because of the, the classy factor of it. Is mm. I don't like bigger knives that are classy because it kind of... Defeats the It purpose. mitigates yeah. the point. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. No, and for you, I can I totally understand that. I don't buy them because of that. I buy them because they're loud. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, suppose you're so. not exactly a classy guy. You're a whore. Oh, <laughs> oh so brutal. 
It <sighs> says the guy with a collection of Liberace shirts. <laughs> Well, all that being considered, um, well, okay. <laughs> okay, so, um, has Nakamura designed anything else alongside with this knife like he did the Megumi and the Shori? Or was it just this recent um, design? As far as I know, just this recent design, um, it's hard to find English websites to navigate through for his custom <clears throat> stuff, so it's a yes. little tricky to figure out his, his current sense. custom Google stuff. Google Translate can only take you so far, and I get mm -hmm. base, I'm going to be upfront with you guys. I got a little bit lazy with it. I'm like, you know what? Like, this is just too much trouble. <laughs> <laughs> like, these guys probably have enough more uh, enough uh, background knowledge to really support it. Now we are seeing a progression: the Shori and the Megumi. We're both S30V. We're seeing a jump to M390 for the for the uh, for the Nakamura. Then it's 20 CV. So, do you think that is a progression based off of uh, Nakamura's choices, or do you think it's just a progression based off of what's current and prevalent in the market? That's part of the problem. I think M390, 20 CV, and CTS 204P are becoming more popular because they are such new things on the market compared to S30V, S90V. Yeah. I think that they're more popular because um, they're exotic, and I think that we're going to see a continuation of this trend into the future. Mm -hmm. Here's hoping. Um, and now, yes. now I'm wondering... Is that a Benchmade decision? Is that a Nakamura decision? Mm -hmm. This isn't something that we're privy to, and again, I haven't seen the Japanese websites. I haven't been yeah. able to dig through. I don't know what Nakamura thinks about these particular steels. Maybe he's using predominantly Japanese steels. Yeah, it could yeah, be something yeah. something like SG2. Who knows? Mm -hmm. As far as what we have in front of us, um, no, man. I mean, this, this to me is such an improvement upon everything else that he's done with Benchmade mm -hmm. that I think it's worthy of your attention. Yes, most definitely. So we've talked pretty positively about this knife. Yes. Yeah, I think that's been the experience. Can we just very slightly touch on a few things that I would prefer Yeah, yeah they yeah. worked? Point yeah. out any if you have flaws any you find with it, for sure. The, it's yes. a review. That's the, what we're here for. You know... And it's a nitpick, and it doesn't touch, but with how nice all the machining is on this knife, the fact that the blade isn't centered, and even having yeah. tried to center it, yeah. it didn't center. Excuse me. And um, that's not necessarily a this knife issue. It is kind of a made, standard right? for bench made. Oh, yeah, like, 100%. I'm not, I'm not blaming it on this touching. knife. Yeah. I just, um, that's not an axe of slot, so that's not an issue. Now, <laughs> if it's a, now, bench made fans, you guys out there are probably super familiar with the idea that, hey, you know what? There's gonna, there might be some scale rub in this knife when I buy it. Yep. Even though it's nearly three hundred, well, $260 for this guy, right? What's the MSRP Canadian uh, for this guy? It was 250 American, I think Dennis said earlier. Fair, Fair enough, enough yeah. yeah. So regardless, you you expect some minor slop between different uh, levels of tolerance. Yeah. And okay, that's fair. I mean, for yeah, like a production I said, knife. It is a nitpick, um, but I know there are people out there that that is going to be a serious problem well, for. Well, it's kind of funny because this knife actually leans um, from pivot to end of handle. It looks like it leans to the left just a little mm -hmm. bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, not the end of the world for a user, not the end of the world, but... Okay, no. uh, what else? The only other issue that I had, and it's another Benchmade thing that they're fairly commonly known for, but take a look at that tip. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that on camera. Zoom in and try and get it centered here. If you look at the tip, of course it, doesn't want to focus. it is just oh. ever so slightly misground. Mm -hmm. Not a huge deal for most people, being able to get in there and regrind it if, if they want to. From what I've been hearing, that seems to be a bit of a Benchmade issue of as well as yeah. centering the yeah. grind. Now that being said, if you can sharpen a knife, you should be able to put the kind of grind you... Or rather, you should be able to put the kind of bevel that you desire on the edge, edge of your knife. 100%. The only reason I bring it up is because of how nice all the rest of the machining is. Mm -hmm. It bothers me on this one specifically. Yeah, and on this one, it is a little far leaning, but in my mind, I'm very tolerant of the grind being a little off off centered on the Benchmade stuff because they are hand sharpened. Yeah. Yes. It's very hard to do something like that perfectly without a jig or something. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I, de I definitely agree with you 100%. Yeah. Yeah, kind of. Gonna wrap up the review here. Um, essentially, it's a gorgeous knife. We all <laughs> like it. Yes. And I am in love with it. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. It's it extremely is. well machined. And as far as somebody who's like 
really into type tolerances for Benchmade for a production knife. Holy crap, you guys mm -hmm. knocked down to the ballpark. That's awesome. You did such a good job. 100%. I, I want to love it. I really do. But it's just that half inch like it's the, saying it needs to be just an inch bigger. It's the ergonomics for you. you Welcome it. to my Once world. you grab it here, it's not so bad. Oh, pinch grip, pinch any grip. knife. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially yeah. this one. It, such a solid grip. But because it's got such a big finger choil here that chokes you back a little bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. it hangs me up. If mm -hmm. it had a further, like, the valet is almost the exact same specs, but it doesn't have this very large finger choil, and you can choke up more on it. I, I, I want to love this knife, but yeah. it needs to be in a 0.5% size bigger and and then i'll fall in love with it no nope, it's the perfect size <laughs> <laughs> yeah we kind of saw that so, coming from you <laughs> just yeah my own where i want to be i want to love it when i first came oh. out it, I, yeah we never talked about that uh, the half pocket the mini pocket, 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 pocket so baby uh, did yeah, we... i did point out that it did have the hole cut out into it and yeah as dennis just mentioned the bug out size pocket clip and i did notice the bug outs have that cut out as well that's so funny so i'm just curious if they kind of had this knife in mind when they started the production run of those cut out pocket clips or if it was just coincidentally happy. I think it was coincidentally because the bug outs were all about reducing weight, right? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. reducing weight with that but cutout. I Very serendipitous at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean for me, normally I dislike a pocket clip that doesn't fit the rest of the knife, but for this size of knife, it works. It looks good. It, it feels good. Um just get in the way. I think if it was any longer, it would fit into an awkward spacing right? point with the windows. Yeah. This one fits kind of nicely in between the larger two windows. So that contact point yeah. is in just about the right position. Absolutely. It's, it doesn't really cause too many hot spots to no. the hand. It's pretty nice. I was That's kind of the other thing I wasn't with this using knife. it, but I was kind of gripping it to kind of get an idea of what the... A the nice solid like. grip doesn't result in a lot of blisters. Mm -hmm. It's it. weird for such a square knife to feel that good is an achievement. Mm-hmm. I, I think <laughs> yeah I just wanted to make one point um, in the last video I mentioned that the D2 um, steel wheels were made in Italy um, and you called me out on that and I just wanted to say you were right oh well, really I, I went back and did some more research yeah. so, the Chinese made I've yeah. heard multiple people say it now. so the Blue Ridge is the misprint on that then, yeah or something like yeah we'll have and to the M390s point. are still Italian Italian made, made yeah okay. cool those ones actually have Italy on the blade so I'd hope so yeah yeah, yeah. all right this is Nigel the Smith saying good night. Uh, I am who I am. I'm Dennis Vipers. This is the Iron Show, and I am XL.ca. Take care, everyone. We don't need bigger knife. Yeah.